Hello everyone. In this video, you will learn about repeating certain analysis using R and R Markdown. Recently, I saw many dissertations in which the researchers had used the data set, selected some variables, ran correlation or association, as well as significant tests, and built logistic regression models on the selected variables. The unfortunate part was that the researchers concluded based on weak results. Almost every dissertation had the same approach. I was confident that this part can be programmed with a template using R Markdown and R Studio. Since repeating this type of analysis is nothing special, I hope the that the future researchers will focus on bigger problems. Let's get started. We'll open a new R Markdown document and use Tufty, the use the Tufty handout template. Make sure that this works on your computer before you make any changes. So make sure that you click the knit button. If you get any errors, you will have to update some settings or install other packages. Once you are sure that this document knits in your RStudio environment, we will use this document as our starting point. Let's get rid of all the stuff that's below introduction section then make changes in the header, such as the title and the author. We will also replace the output format to Tufty Book 2. We will also replace the bibliogra bibliography file name, which I named repeatanalysis.bib. Let's insert our first R chunk to load our favorite libraries and custom functions. Here, I have a mode function copied from Stack Overflow, of course, which we will use to replace missing values. Next, we will load and manipulate a data set. This synthetic data set is from my and Roger Devine's book, Data Science for Fundraising. Let's see the data manipulation step by step. First, I removed any non-alumni from the data set. Then I selected a few variables of importance, nothing special. Then I created buckets using the total giving variable. I created the buckets for that variable. Same with the age variable. I added few other extra fake variables and randomly generated their values. Finally, I replaced the missing values from a numerical variable with the median of that variable and for character variables I use mode of those variables. I also replace the underscores in the variable names with spaces. Now to the fun part, let's run some statistical tests. Before we do so, let's take a detour to understand the map functions from the package per. The map function is similar to the apply family of functions in that you can apply any function to a list and do something with the results. In our case, we want to apply statistical tests to each variable in our data set. Let's take a simple example. We have two variables in our data frame, x and y. We want to find the mean of each of those variables. Of course, this can be done running su the summary command, but we want to see how we can use this function for complex use cases. The tiny wiggly tilde sign here represents the data that's before the map command, and the dot x represents each column from the previous data set. When we execute this, we can see a list of two items, one for each variable, as seen by the stir function. Instead of getting a list, we can return a data frame using the map underscore DFR function. Or we can use a shortcut function map underscore DBL to return a vector with the mean values. Let's run a linear regression model on variables from a data set. First, let's create a test data frame 
with our dependent variable z. Take some function uh, which takes some form of x and y. Now to build the linear regression model, we have to exclude z from the data set that's fed to the map function. But we still need to provide that to the data argument of the map function for the linear regression model. When we run this, we get a list with two models, one for each of the variables x and y. Let's extract the summary for each of the models. If we want to get all the summary statistics, we can use the tidy function from the broom package and return these statistics as a data frame. And this forms the backbone of our analysis. We create data frame or lists containing the statistics we are interested in, and then extract values for these variables in the, uh, in the document. For example, let's say we want to extract the p-value of the y variable. Here's how we can do so. Following this approach, let's run anal the run analysis of variance on each of the nominal variable and the total given group variable. Then extract the p-value for each of those variables. Next. Let's get the Pearson product moment correlation coefficient for numeric variables, then Kramer's V value to measure the association between total giving group variable and each of the nominal variables. Now let's build a logistic, logistic regression models for each of the variables and the total given group variable. Finally, we will extract the AIC value for these models. Now we have all the results we need to put them into a nice looking document. Let's add some text to the introduction section in our markdown document and create a new section called variable analysis. We will now insert a R chunk to create sections for each variable. In this section, we will report the proportions and counts for each value in the variable. We will then generate a conditional sentence based on the p-value from the ANOVA results. First, we create a loop to go through the variables we want to report on. We then create a markdown subsection for that variable. We construct a generic sentence to provide a reference to the proportions table. We create the proportions table using the table function from the janitor package. You will see that I'm using two exclamation marks and the sim function to get the underlying column name from the looping variable. Here's how it works. Here's an example. We use the add-on functions to add percentages and totals, as well as we add the grouping variable as the table header. Then using the cable function and some functions from the cable extra package, we create a proportions table to our liking. We have to add a few new line characters to make sure our final results, results look good. Next, using the p-values from the ANOVA results, we write a conditional sentence. That is, if the p-value is less than or equal to 0 0.05, there is a relationship between that variable and the total giving variable. Again, we have to add few more new line characters. Now, we will report out the results from the logistic regression models. Let's create a new section. We will pull the important variables using the p-value again. But for example's sake, I'm using 0.5 p-value as a threshold. Using an inline R command, we print, we print all the important variables. In a new R chunk, we follow the same approach from the previous loop. We create a new subsection for each variable. 
we print a generic sentence reference, referencing the results from the logistic regression model. Then select the appropriate, appropriate rows from the logistic regression results data frame and then print the table. We add some conditional text based on the Kramer V values, whether the association was strong or weak. And finally, we print the AIC values from the logistic regression model. Now we have everything to create our final document. Let's hit the knit button to see the document. And there it is, a beautiful document with descriptive statistics, vague inferences, and dubious predictive models. This could be a good starting point for anyone who wants to analyze his or her data, but this type of analysis should not form the core components of a dissertation, especially when the scientific journals are discouraging or banning the null hypothesis significance testing to draw inferences. As the editor of the Basic and Applied Social Psychology Journal said, the P less than 0.05 bar is too easy to pass and sometimes serves as an excuse for lower quality research. I hope that you learn how to automate and repeat statistical analysis using R and R Markdown. Please check out the links in the description for the code and accompanying blog post.